Good morning, it's Mrs. Gibson, and we are going to once again be using the same magazine, this New York Times up front. Today we are going to be reading pages two and three and four and five. So if you would, get your magazine and open it to page two, where it says the big picture, insect, apocalypse. You see there's a little globe. You'll see that the insect apocalypse is happening in Kenya, and that is on the far east side of the continent of Africa. Swarms of locusts are wrecking havoc in East Africa. Unusually wet weather has resulted in billions of the grasshopper-like insects in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia, and South Sudan, and Uganda could be next. The bugs which reproduce in moist conditions are devouring crops at an alarming pace. In one day, an average swarm can destroy enough food to feed the thousands of people. And in a country like Kenya, where millions already face food insecurity, the situation has quickly become dire. It's the worst locust invasion the country has experienced in 70 years. And if left unchecked, swarms could grow 500 times bigger by June, according to experts. That's why the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is calling for $70 million to increase aerial pesticide spraying, the only effective method for combating the locusts. And special attention will need to be given to those who have lost all their crops, officials say. Alongside pest control activities, our response must include efforts to restore people's livelihoods, says FAO Director General Hugh Dongyu. We need to help them get back on their feet once the locusts are gone. And if you look at the picture there on page three, that is the swarm of locusts. I sent you a video, and since this magazine was released, now there is now a second round of these huge grasshoppers devouring in Kenya, Ethiopia, and the, the other countries there in Africa. Let's now go to page four and look at Hannah and Charlie. It says, Mental Health, an app that can save lives. And I'll read that to you. And I sent you a video on this one also. One night, a couple of years ago, Hannah Lucas, who's now 17, couldn't shake her dark feelings. Scared and alone, she wanted to reach out to her family, but didn't know how. Luckily, her mom checked on her, and Hannah tearfully told her how she was feeling. The experience gave Hannah an idea. She could create an app that made it easy for teens suffering from mental illness to ask for help. She asked her 15-year-old brother, Charlie, for help <clears throat> with the coding. Together, they created the Not OK app, which lets users enter contact info for up to five people they trust. If they need help, they press a button that sends this message, hey, I'm not OK. Please call me, text me, or come find me, along with their GPS location. More than 70,000 people in the United States have downloaded the app, and creating it brought the siblings closer together. It was just uplifting being able to help Hannah in this way, Charlie says, and being able to make sure that no one else had to go through what Hannah did. I also sent you a video for this ancient history, Chew on This, and that big blob of black stuff is 5,700-year-old gum. When hunter-gatherers living in what is now Denmark popped sticky pieces of birch tar into their mouths about 5,700 years ago, they didn't realize they were leaving future scientists their DNA. Ancient people used the sticky residue that comes out of birch bark to fix tools, and when it started to solidify, they rolled it in their mouths and chewed on it, like primitive bubble gum. Researchers recently found a lot of the gum, and the DNA in the saliva provided many details about who had chewed it was a woman with a dark complexion, dark hair, and blue eyes. They could also tell she'd eaten duck and hazelnuts and could not digest milk. This information will help scientists better understand what life was like for some of our ancestors. This is a snapshot of a real person in real time, says Natalia Kashuba, an archeologist at Uppsala University in Sweden. It's as close as we'll ever come to standing face to face with an individual from the Stone Age in Scandinavia. Let's now go down the blue bar in the center, number in the news. 
338 feet, that's the length of a pizza cooked by an Australian pizzeria in January. It was cut into 4,000 slices and proceeds used to raise money for firefighters battling the country's bushfires. 2.7 seconds, it took a drone built by a New Jersey high schooler, Zekin Peter, to ascend 100 meters in the air. That's a new world record. 80 is the number of wedding anniversaries celebrated by John and Charlotte Henderson of Texas. They're the world's oldest living couple. He's 106 years old and she's 105 years old. $1.8 million is the amount Kiyoshi Kimura, a Japanese businessman, paid for a 608 pound blue fin tuna in Tokyo. He bought it at a fish market in January and he is known as the tuna king because he runs a sushi, a sushi restaurant chain. Let's now go to the top of page five and look at growth spurts. Dealing with the population, it says this graph shows which countries are expected to have the largest population in the year 2100, according to the United Nations estimates. India will overtake China as the most populous country and the United States will drop to fourth place. What else do you notice about the future top 10 countries? So if you look at the graph, you'll see there's 2020 where we're living currently. China has the most people, then it's India, then it's us, the United States. But look at 2100. China and India swap places. Nigeria bounces up from place seven to place three, and that drops the United States down into fourth place. In some places, just completely disappeared, just no longer there. Cleaning up the cosmos. This is dealing with space. An estimated 170 million pieces of debris are orbiting Earth, from old rocket parts to dead satellites. And some of that space garbage is moving faster than a bullet, making it dangerous for spacecraft. That's why the European Space Agency, known as ESA, is launching its first cleanup mission. This year, scientists are starting work on a robotic junk collector that was launched in 2025. It will grab a piece of abandoned debris and drag it out of orbit. Both the robot and the debris will burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Similar robots have been tested before, but this will be the first mission to remove an actual piece of space debris. And if it all goes well, scientists hope eventually to be able to tackle multiple pieces at once. But even a small cleanup, they say, is crucial. Imagine how dangerous sailing the high seas would be if all of the ships ever lost in history were still drifting on top of the water, says Joan Warner, Director General of the ESA. That is the current situation in orbit, and it cannot be allowed to continue. And the dilemma. So let's read that. Silent commute. I'm a freshman in high school. Since the school year started, I've been taking the subway with a friend from middle school. He just created an Instagram account, and he's obsessed with it. Before, it was fun to talk with him. Now, his eyes are glued to his phone the whole time, even we're in the middle of a conversation. I would much rather listen to music on my headphones, but I don't know how to tell him I don't want to commute with him anymore. Advice? And I would say this is probably a common problem because so many people are tied into their phones all the time. The response is, I'm glad you're thinking about your phone life balance and about sharing your feelings with your friend. How else would he know? Say, now that you're on Instagram, our commutes aren't as fun for me as when we used to talk. Do you have to scroll the whole time? If that's what you want, I'd rather listen to music and commute on my own. Do you think we can compromise? You may not persuade him, but it is worth a try. And that concludes our reading for today.